ഹദീസുകൾ <laughs> أما بعد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بل نقذف بالحق على الباطل فيدمغه فإذا هو زاهق ولكم الويل من ما تصفون وقال الله تعالى وما أرسلناك عليه وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم انما الاعمال بالنيات وانما لكل امرئ ما نوى كما قال مولاي صل وسلم دائما ابنا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وقال الله تعالى ിംഗ് <coughs> the huge huge differences that is increasingly <coughs> being compounded by various types of misinformation and disinformation until the truth is not revealed in its entirety one cannot have a complete picture to come to an educated in line in in enlightened judgment result or decision if you look at the picture and you see only three quarter of the picture you are not going to have the entire picture one needs to have a complete as possible understanding of what is currently transpiring amongst not only the the ulama but also on a larger scale what is causing this huge upheaval in the entire umma undoubtedly the majority of the information and narrative e e e is a one sided narrative a one sided story for various reasons the ulama of haq by and large remain silent the motives are between themselves and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some feel to not inflame the situation others says let us not make a mockery of ourselves in front of the public we will lose respect in the public domain 
Yet others mention, you know, let us use hikmah. Yet others say, you know what, let us not hurt the feelings of anyone. Noble motives, noble intentions, does not always end up with a noble result in the desired effect and the desired objective. In fact, at times, the Sharia has blunted the pain of wisdom, words of, of kindness by taking a route where it is it insists, insists that the truth be told in a manner that is befitting the situation and the condition that is trans that is prevalent. We take it hadith or two from the seerah, yes, the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once told Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa radiyallahu ta'ala anha, O oh, Aisha, wait not for your people. And what they would comment and what they would, they would say, I would have included the entire hatim in the Baytullah. Now we know the Hatim is part of Baytullah. It is that uh, what circular portion of that is attached sort of to the Baytullah. Uh, the wall extends maybe a meter and a half or so. It's where the limbs or the lighting system is. People go into the Hatim and it is as good as going into the Baytullah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa had a desire to include it and extend the length of that wall to be as high as the wall of the Baytullah. But Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa took into consideration what the reaction of society was going to be. Allah Talal did not say anything in the Quran Kareem, nor was Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa admonished, nor was Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa in any way given any further instruction or guidance from the skies with regards to the Baytullah. Why it was not such an integral part of the basic fundamentals of the deen? Silence, leave it, let us not stir up a hornet's nest, so as to say. Then we find another situation where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had adopted this young African race from the African race Zaid bin Haritha radiallahu ta'ala he was a slave he was sold in Makkah Mukarma as Khadija radiallahu ta'ala purchased him and when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got married to Azra Khadija radiallahu ta'ala she gave this particular slave to serve Nabi Sallallahu Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's relationship with this young, small little boy was of such a nature that eventually when Zaid bin Haritha's father finds out that his son is in Makkah Mukarma, he has been sold as a slave, the father and the uncle with Several people of the clan, the tribe, they approach Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they say, we, would, we, we wish to purchase this boy back from you, whatever the price, we don't mind. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, see, I will call him. If he is prepared to go on his own will, you do not have to pay me anything. However, if he decides to stay, then then give me an assurance that you will not prevent him from staying with me. They thought this is a very easy deal, something uh, that is very appealing. We can get back our son, our nephew, and we don't even have to pay any money. And accordingly, Zaid, young Zaid was brought. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his eyes were only on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How kind and how merciful and how light and how much love Rasulullah must have displayed upon that young little boy 
That when he came in the presence of Nabi Sallallahu he did not even look at his father and his uncle and run to them and hug them. He had eyes only for Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He stood there grinning, smiling. Nabi Sallallahu said, Oh Zaid, do you know who these two people are, these people are that have come here? He says, yes. Now he looked at them. He said, this is my father. This is my uncle. He's not running, jumping, hopping, squealing with delight. The kutub of an ahadith would have narrated if that was his reaction. He's just got eyes for Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to him thereafter, oh Zaid, they have come to take you away. Do you wish to go with them? He says, no, I don't want to go with them. I want to stay with you. The father is taken aback. The uncle is taken aback. The people who are with him, they are taken aback. He does not want to leave his father. He, don't want, he does not want to come with his father and uncle, etc. They looked at Nabi Salaam smiling. They looked at that smile of Zayd. There was no question of even thinking of persuading Zaid to come. Such was that magical bond between the two smiles that they were pleased, they stood up, they said, we know our son is in good hands. Nabi Salaam stood up, went to the Baytullah, held the hand of Zaid in his hand and announced to the people who were there O oh, people, bear witness, from today Zaid is my son. O oh, people, bear witness, today, from today Zaid is my son. And Zaid was overwhelmed with happiness, smiling, secure and comfortable in the knowledge that I have a father called Muhammad. That time, Nabi Sassam was not a Nabi as yet, but I have a father. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He refused his own father's companionship and valued the companionship of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Life carries on. The river of life flows on. Nothing can stop it. Taqdeer takes its course. Nabi Sassam became, was conferred with prophet, the mantle of Prophet who did the age of 40, as we all know, and Zaid was amongst the very first few that accepted Iman in Islam. Wherever he would go, it was Zaid bin Muhammad, Zaid bin Muhammad, Zaid bin Muhammad. And he would take great joy in this particular title, that Zaid, the son of Muhammad. Eventually came a time that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa got him married to his own cousin Hazrat Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. And accordingly, Zainab radiallahu ta'ala being from Arab origin, very noble woman, and she accepted the proposal of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Although Zaid was a slave and from a very different tribe, but see Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa approached her and said, you know, this is like my son. This is my son, Zaid bin Muhammad. And she thought, this is Allah's Rasul speaking. I cannot do it. I would wish not to do anything except to abide by his command. And thus the African's ex-slave got married to the Arabian princess, if we can call it of a time, Hazrat Zainab, whose beauty was well known and he, whose, whose honorable character was attested to one in all. So he was known as Zaid bin Muhammad and she was in his nikah. Come a day, came a day and a time and a moment when Jibreel alayhi salam descended from the skies and such a, what can one call it? a life-changing ayat, not only for Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi not only for Zayd, but for the entire mankind was revealed. Udu'uhum liyabaihim huwa qasatu indallah. Henceforth call 
people link them up with the names of their fathers. Udaruhum, call them with who? The Abaim, who were the fathers, the real biological fathers. This year is closer to justice according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not going to go into the details except that there was such a UN cry such commotion in such a tribulation and such eyes popping wide no more are the adopted sons to be called by the adopted father's surnames etc names they are henceforth shall be known by the biological father's names they naturally was taken aback. It's the ayat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala decided that this trend cannot, should not continue amongst mankind. A child is born, when a child is born, the child is to be known by his biological father's name. In view of this hurt that Zaid naturally would have experienced because it's no more Zaid bin Muhammad, it's going to be back to Zaid bin Haritha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only who is known as Arham rahmin and only he whose name we say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, most merciful, most beneficial, benevolent, Allah's mercy encompassed Zaid in such a way that he forgot, he forgot what he had lost and he remembered what Allah Ta'ala gave him in return. That Zayd's name is the only name in the entire Quran Kareem. Zayd is the only Sahaba whose name appears in the entire Quran Kareem, starting from Bismillah, right till Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbin Nas. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. No one's name come in the Quran Kareem. It's only Zayd. Falamma qawwa Zaydun minha. Falamma qawwa Zaydun minha. When Zayd concluded what he had to do, and it separated from Zayd. Falamma qawwa Zayd. Zayd later on would say, when people will recite my names, they will get 30 tawab. The za, the ya, and the da. Till the day of Yom al Qiyamah, people would remember him, memorize his name, write his name, engrave his name. Till the day of Yom al Qiyamah, the word Zaid would be recited in shacks and in huts and in tents and in buildings and in masajid and in the holy haram of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the haram of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Till the day of Yom al Qiyamah, people will accumulate thawab upon thawab, rewards upon rewards on the day of Qiyamah, wherein, whenever, wherever they read the word Zayd, that the thawab will come on the scales of every single person who had uttered his name, such on Allah Ta'ala, Rahmur Rahimin, blessed him with. When Allah snatches away what we think in Ni'mat, the replacement is is beyond our imagination, it is beyond our comprehension, it is beyond our understanding, it, it simply is such a replacement of a ni'mat that will not, never can be given by anyone else but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you see here was a situation, there, there was a situation, there the Baytullah, the the lengthening of the wall of the Baytullah did not have any direct impact on the Sharia. Leave it. Don't let's rake up, ruffle feathers in a Quraysh must speak until the day of Qiyamah people will say, yes, you know, this, this, this. Leave it. Let it, let it be. In an instance where a masala was to be included in the Sharia that is an everlasting, evergreen, ever-loving mode of life, a formula, a pattern, a system constructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. 
شرع لكم من الدين ما وصى شرع لكم من الدين ما وصى شرع شرع لكم من الدين ما وصى لا تلو دين الشريعة he made it a system for our deen thumma ja'alnaka ala shari'ah thumma ja'alnaka ala shari'ah o oh, muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we have placed you on the pedestal of the sharia people speak about sira and people speak about how great islam must be and people construct various and formulate various systems if it is in conformity to the sunnah the sharia of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to the spirit of the seer of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam then that particular sharia will be a very vibrant that particular community and society will be a very powerful community and society because they are living their lives according to their life that the creator wants them to live they lead a life with hijab because the creator himself has given us instructions to observe hijab they understand the success of this ummah and the success of our entire mankind will be the segregation of various genders and sexes etc they understand that our security our marriages our children our shame our dignity our honor will be to remain segregated no one can come and displace this particular sharia of allah with their own philosophy and own ideology and try and ram it down the throats of the ummah by saying send your sons to the university and your daughters to the university so that this ummah can be upgraded and uplifted to say that let's save them we are, it's like saying to a, a person who jumps into the fire and who jumps into the middle of the ocean he wants to swim and suddenly you put it on all of men can save him save him fine no one says you mustn't call out save him but more intelligence dictates this here tell him before him don't jump into the fire you are not a superman don't jump into the middle of the ocean you are not a superman you would have to say the the reason logic dictates from childhood tell them you know what don't interact with women that are ghair mehram you are going to you are going to be jumping into a fire of fitna why nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i have not left behind a greater fitna for my ummah than the fitna of women they decide to go to the universities they are fully away they maybe they're not fully away Yes, there is some logic to this here. Maybe they're not fully aware. Because the ulama, by and large, don't want to say it openly and clearly. Don't go to the universities. You are going to jump into a fire, O sister. You are going to intermingle with men there. You are going to be subjected by taunts. You are going to be mocked that you will be jeered. They will sing songs and they will jive and they will clap hands. We say they, the kuffar especially. And that is part of the initiation rites in the university where you will be humiliated. They will want to know from you whether you have ever slept with any man before or not. It is happening. They are not denied. A professor has written a book on this. He kept himself anonymous you don't blame him the toxic environment that has been created don't decide don't speak from quran and hadith don't speak about what we don't say go and google the amount of condoms that are fine in the university or hostels don't speak about it this thing shouldn't be spoken about take it easy even as our sisters of lives and reputations are ruined and even as they are humiliated and disgraced even if they, you lose their chastity etc it doesn't matter if the daughters of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam are spoiled and mutilated their honor it does not matter but don't speak you causing fitna think for yourself it's the truth it's nothing but the truth so we allowed them in the first instance 
by keeping them ignorant of the ilm that Allah has blessed the ulama of haq with. Every ulama, every alim knows the ayat. قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّوا مِنَ بُصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغُضُّرْنَ مِنَ بُصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنَّ I can't understand. Perhaps it's my lack of understanding, but here's an ayah in Surah Nur. Where Allah Ta'ala says clearly to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, announce to the females, وَقُلِّ mu'minin, and first announce to the males. That same announcement, Allah Ta'ala could have said, Ya ayyuhu alladhina, amanu, O believers. Here separately the males have been addressed. It's, a, it's, it's very important. It's absolutely a major component of your life. It's a major component of your peace of mind. It is a major component of your Iman and your Islam. So separately tell the men. Separately, don't tell it in a mixed gathering. Address them separately. Wa kullil mu'minin. Kullil mu'minin. Oh men. Listen here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Ghuddud, they should look down with their eyes. Look down. Put your eyes down. Look a few meters in front of you. But look down. Don't look to the left unnecessarily, nor to the right unnecessarily, not upwards unnecessarily. Look down. Why? You see, Allah loves the mu'min, he loves the sahaba, he loves this ummah, he loves them, he loves them so much that it is indescribable how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this ummah. After all, are they not the beloved of his beloved? Are the Ummah not the beloved of Muhammad Rasim, who is Allah's beloved? So Allah Ta'ala wants us to be safe from Jahannam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants to save our marriages. Allah Ta'ala wants to save the secure, security and the stability of our kids. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants to save the honor of all age parents. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants a pure society, a pristine society, free from, free from bastard children, free from illegitimate children, free from such children that we do not know who their real parents are, free from getting a child's hair to say, let us see who's your biological father and let's send it out for a DNA test, etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pure. He loves pure. Inna Allah jamalun yuhibbul jamal. Allah is beautiful. He loves beauty. So, the instruction is very clear. Dhalika azkalahum. This is more pure for you, O Sahaba. Otherwise, when you look and you see a strange woman, desire can be ignited in you. Shaitan can come whispering. And before you know, you are, you you forge a relationship with her, thinking that you are in control of this relationship, thinking that you are in control of your intentions and your desires. You start checking her up, she starts checking back. You start flirting, she flirts back. You want to be smart, she wants to be smarter. You want to be worthy, you want to embrace her mind and her, more importantly her heart. And to show that you can be more what is she is going to uh, try and outdo or you outdo you and shaitan is going to be the messenger between both of you and sleeping time you'll think of her and she's going to think of you and shaitan will whisper just send her message you are lonely and he, she will take receive the message and under blanket even as she's lying next to her husband she will now conduct conversations with her mahram it starts from sight a blind man very seldom, very seldom commits adultery. And before you know you are gone and she's a gone and nothing can help anyone. The shaitan has chained your hearts to one another, chained your minds to one another. And you have broken the chain of purity which Allah has sent us in this dunya with Dharik Azkalum. Similarly, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you now speak to the females. You address the Sahabiyat, وَقُلِّ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَقُلِّ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Come, O Hafsa, come, O Saudiya, come, O Maymuna, come, O Fatima. 
come all Ruqiyya, come all the Sahabiyat, come all those who, you as women who are standing by my side, you are standing behind me, you are standing in front of me, you have sent your children to serve as shields to protect me. Yes! Today, you want to send them to university. They must have the love of Allah and His Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They must speak to Ghair Mihram and they must flirt with Ghair Mihram and they must have adulterous relationships with them. And you say, no, they must uplift the Ummah. They must uplift the Ummah. What will you reply to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You spoke in the seerah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You've betrayed the seerah, the soul of the seerah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will ask you, you, you who are an alim, you who are a representative of me, you who are amongst the worst of Anbiya, you whom I left the amana of, him, of the Ummah in your hands, you as an alim understand who he is, what he is all about. There's no Nabi coming that Nabi's message which he came with is handed it amana unto the alim. You told my daughters to go to the university and to uplift my ummah. Answer! Answer! In the dunya you can get away. You can twist and you can twirl. You can spin and you can deceive. You can bring veils upon the minds of people not to be exposed. You fear exposure. You fear your crimes. Your crimes are haunting you. You know you walk around with a topi in a shop and you go hunting and thereafter suddenly you say, you know, I was in a hotel room and I was called out with all these Turkish youngsters and I rushed down, I didn't have my topi and as such, how can they blame me? But you forget the other part, Allah will expose you. Allah will expose you, Allah, because you are messing around with the deen of Nabi Sallallahu to enhance your reputation and to increase your honor amongst people and to project yourself as somebody very great, almost untouchable, almost unanswerable, almost unchallengeable. Allah will challenge you, he'll use people. People don't just speak. It's Allah that guides their hearts. And it's Allah that uses their tongues as swords and bullets and missiles. You will never be able to subdue them. So this is the issue with regards to the honor of the Mu'minat. I will tell our sisters, don't go to the university. Don't go to the college. Don't go to the institutions. And can I say something again? It's amazing. In the talk that was given, calling upon the ummah to save the youth. The youth want to jump into the fire. Why should the ulama have a conscience? They should be educated. Don't go there in the first place. Then you don't have to save them. Simple. Don't go there in the first place. Tell them it's haram. You're going into an environment of complete fisk, fujur, kufr. People will want to debate with you. There will be Shias there, and there will be Qadianis there, and a whole host of rotten elements. They will try and uh, convince you of the Batil Aqaid. Just don't put your foot in there. That is what is to be understood. Now I say to you, there was a battle, I think it was of Uhad. Nabi Sassam called for reinforcements. Nabi Sassam called for assistance. Nabi Sassam told Bilal, oh Bilal, go, ya, you al call in towards jihad. Hayya al jihad, hayya al jihad. Bilal radiallahu walked the Mani roads of Medina Munawara, the alleys of Medina Munawara, the gullies of Medina Munawara, proclaiming in his so sweet, soothing, loud voice, hayya al jihad. The Sahaba heard the voice and they came rushing and running. They brought whatever they had in the possessions of war or whatever they could, whatever they could afford. They brought it. They put it at the feet of Nabi Salaam. Here you are, Ya Rasulullah. I've been called forth to protect the deen. I've been called forth to protect you. I've been called forth to protect Islam. Here I am. 
heart, soul, mind, body, wealth, everything. A lady came. She stood aside with a lot of haya and shame. We are the ones that destroy the shame of, of our daughters. We dress them wrong when they are small. We allow them to talk however they wish to, with whomsoever they wish to. We allow them to sit in front of the TV and see the Molana and uh, Khala or whatever she is there on the ITV and they are talking. She understands already from the age of five and six, we have obliterated her fitrat. We have obliterated that natural shame and haya which Allah has put in every small little girl's heart. We have obliterated it in the name of Islam. So she sees, she looks, she talks and she grows up. And she has access to the cell phone and she goes to school and she talks and chats to whosoever she wants to. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was approached by the Sahabia. She stands on one side, looking down, and she says, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I've also brought something. What is it that you have brought? She hands over a little child, an infant. Nabi Sallallahu says, This is but an infant. How is this infant going to assist in the jihad? She says, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have brought this infant with one intention. What is the intention? Uh, this infant cannot string a bow to the arrow. This infant cannot pull the string of the arrow and let the bow fly out. This infant cannot hold a sword and wield a sword to strike the enemy. This infant cannot throw a spear. The fingers are very small. This infant, how, how does it help? Assist. She said, Ya Rasulullah, I've got nothing to offer you. I do not have a sword, I do not have a guy, I do not have a spear, I do not have an arrow, I do not have anything, I do not have any wealth, I do not have any money. I have nothing to offer you. I am bankrupt till the bone, oh Ya Rasulullah. But I... I it is my desire that when an arrow is aimed at you and you find yourself without a shield, you quickly pick up my little masum infant and you place the infant in front of your face and Mubarak face and Mubarak chest and let that arrow strike my little one, my flesh and blood, so that you may not be harmed. Is there any single mother on the surface of this world that says, I will give my infant for the love of Allah and His Rasul and for the protection of the deen? You said you must go to universities. And I was saying you are very sly and very cunning. I will reveal, uh, no names taken. Everyone can find the name if they want to. Allah will show them who the names are. They always say, you know, don't take names in shame. It's a different matter. Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi gave wasiyah to his beloved student, Oh Yusuf, oh Abu Yusuf, oh you. Listen here, when people do wrong in a society, in a community, and they are the prominent ones, and the fluent ones, and the ones that are the opinion makers, name them and shame them so that the Ummah does not get misled. You only use the word female doctors. Send them to the universities. Why? So that you may female doctors. You see, you play on the sentiment of people because people always are in need of doctors. You forget the other part where the SG of the Jamiat in the South meeting day in Nurul Islam. A huge, big, very big meetings. These meetings are not for people like us. These are big people's meetings and very big audiences and very big uh, meals and very big programs. Then the words were used so that they even may become journalists. Females must become journalists. You know it doesn't make sense. You see, uplift the ummah. People get sick in the ummah. You uplift them. You need a doctor to uplift you in your health. But you never use the word journalist. And yet the other personality who was in this particular Sira, Jalsad, he used the word even journalist, engineers, architects, whatever else it may be, but the word journalist was most certainly there. 
we come to the need of the Sharia. Time is running out so fast. I was supposed to conclude with the story of this particular Kambakhat Rajpal. He had written a kitab, I carry on from where I stopped. He had written a kitab, a book. In it, he had, in a very, very brutal way, assaulted the Izzat of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Shah Taullah Bukhari, Rahmatullah Ali, Mufti Ghi, Kifayatullah, Rahmatullah Ali, Mulana Ahmad Saeed, Rahmatullah Alayhi Mwasi'ah. These were ulama, these were the stars that we hear, the ulama like the stars in the skies. They give guidance and they bring light to darkness. The British had put a curfew in place. People couldn't gather, shouldn't gather, otherwise you are going to be in prison. They broke the curfew and a huge crowd gathered in Lahore. And there, Mufti Kifayatullah Rahmatullah gave a talk and in the talk, and this entire story has been narrated by Maulana Thanwi Rahmatullah in Adab Tabligh, the Adab, the principles, the methodology of how to make Tabligh. Hakim al Ummah is giving the story. What did he say? He say, Oh people, listen here. Today, Azir Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and Azir Khadija radiallahu ta'ala are calling out at the doors of Mufti Kifayatullah and Mawlana Ahmad Saeed. They are telling you, we are your mothers. Do you know that the disbelievers are abusing us? Oh people, check. Is Azir Aisha radiallahu ta'ala not standing at your door? His words pierced into the deep recesses of the hearts with such passion and fervor that the gazes of the listeners instantly left shifted towards the door. From all directions, the echoes of sighs and cries could be heard. They addressed, he addressed, Mufti Kifatla addressed these two Buzruks. It appears they were Sayyids. It appears, I have to confirm, that they were from the family of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he says, don't you see there Aisha and Khadija, don't you see them there calling out to you? We are your mothers. Do you not know that the disbelievers are abusing us? Only Allah knows what they see seen when they looked at the particular direction. Nothing is made mention. But it was something very spiritual for the entire crowd to cry out. Then Mufti Kifayatullah continued. The condition of your love is such, in normal circumstances, it will fight till the bitter end. When it is a, some personal issue, when it is some personal issue, you are going to fight till the end. If someone swears your father, your mother or somebody, what are you going to do? You are going to fight. If they are going to say your father is a womanizer, you will do what? What will we do? We will say you know me. I'm coming for you. I will sort you out. I will take you to task. I will fix you up. I'm going to make sure I'm going to even kill you. You call my father a adulterer. You call my mother a prostitute for your own personal self. You will stand up and you will fight. But do you not know that today Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is uneasy beneath the green dome? Today, Hazrat Khadija and Hazrat Aisha are restless. Do you have any place for the mothers of the believers in your hearts? Today, the mothers of the believers, Hazrat Aisha are seeking her right from you. Today, Hazrat Aisha is calling. If it was said at that time in 1929, in April 1929, and to be even more specific, in April the 29th, the 1929, when this call was made, then, today in 2002, today in 2002, on the 6th of February, this call is still as valid as it was at that time. For today, the Shias that are calling, 
او ماده حضر عائشه رضی اللہ تعالیٰ اس زانیہ اس دلترس دی کول انڈیا بین انٹرٹین ان مسجد قدس دی ہول لوٹ آف دیم کم دی آر قاریس دی کم فرم ایران دی پوستس آر پوٹ اپ دی پوستس آر سیکولیٹڈ تھرو آؤٹ دی لنث ان دی بریث آف دی کنٹری ان ایوری ون گوز دی اندی سیز دی سیم قاریس شیعہ قاریس ریسائٹن قیرات بڑ دیپ داؤن انہیں آتے ہول حیثرت و حضرت عائشہ ان حضرت عائشہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ اس فادہ حضرت ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ ان ان ایت گیدرین یو فائن دی جوسا پیپل آ دے دی پیپل ایت کلیم دیت وی آئی او پری پیزنٹیٹیوز ان ساؤڈ ایفریکا دی پیپل ایت سی دیت او فتوہ سا بائننگ اپون یو دی سب دی امانس دی کراؤڈ دی لوک ایت دیس پیپل دی انڈرسٹین وچ شیعزم ایس آل اباؤت ایف بین تورت وائل ایو سٹڈین دی سب دی نوٹ دو دی سب دی ریڈو اسلام گیوز ان اوارڈ دی گیوز ان اوارڈ موس انکلوسف مسجی موس انووٹف فیری دی بریلین They innovate. They find new ways in you to get the Ummah, to unite the Ummah. And not only that, Wallahi al-Azim, I can prove it to you. You will find the literature coming to you. You will find the WhatsApp messages coming to you. You will find the evidence coming to you. Allah will send it to you. You will see they are written very clearly. We would like every masjid in a country to be like Masjid Al-Quds. We would love. The yes, SG says it. We would love every masjid to become like Masjid al Quds. That means Rainbow Masjid, Jamia Masjid, Jama Masjid, Masjid Umar Farooq, Masjid Umar Abu Bakr, Usman Masjid Uthman Masjid. You name it, Masjid Hamza, the Masjid Aisha, the Masjid in your locality, the Masjid in Stanton, the Masjid in uh, wherever it is. We, we would like every masjid to be like this year, man, get everyone together. Wherever that is, everyone is a person who reviles Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uses the... Astaghfirullah. I hate saying the words, but how will the veils of steel, of batil, of evil that has enveloped our hearts and how will the minds that have been so, so... Affected by the propaganda and by untruths and by batil and by fancy slogans and by flowery language. How will those minds be pierced if you don't say the words which you had written not once, twice? Islam has no problem if the Prophet is depicted as a madman, as a womanizer and who is bloodthirsty. It must be said. As much as we don't, and Allah look after the speakers' iman and everyone's iman. But how will your eyes not open to say, wait, what is happening here, man? Did Radio Islam really give an award? You know, they chime. They constantly uh, sing the song, what will you ever do without Radio Islam? So many hundreds of thousands of listeners. What will you look at the, the, how fierce this onslaught is? But all oh, people of Haq, do not ever worry. No matter they can come with stone armies of Batil, and they can come with volcanoes that are erupting with Batil, and they can come with winds that resemble typhoons. The Israelites was subjected to something more fiercer and more brutal than this year. When they attacked him in Ohad, the onslaught was so major, so huge, so blunt and so purposeful that it caused the Vizrasim to slip even. And he got wounded and they never let up. They screamed, they shouted, they instigated and they encouraged, go for him, go, shoot the arrows, they say, shoot, shoot. And Abu Talha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Amongst the very few at that particular time, that critical time when Allah's every, uh, Rasul's every single portion of his Mubarak body was under the great of the, of the danger ever imaginable more than even Taif at a certain time. It was Abu Talha was kneeling and shooting arrows left, right. 
How this one here go is grabbing another, had another and is shooting. And Nabi Sassam is seeing and Nabi Sassam says, Bia bi wa ummi Abu Talha, oh kama kaal, my parents be sacrificed upon you. It was at that time when Nabi Sassam's Mubarak tooth became injured and it was made shaheed. We haven't ever given a drop, not none, one, not anyone here at least. I can't think of anyone that can say, really, my finger bled out of the love of Rasulullah. So with your words, if they say you are a radical, you are extremist, you are a fitna maker, you are a facade maker, and we suddenly cringe and we go into the corners and we want to hide in the dark and we don't want to take our names and I must, be, no, I must be neutral, I respect every side, you respect the side who gives an award when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being so, his reputation is being so brutalized and a person who does that is such in a masjid called Masjid Al-Quds. And you can't think for a moment, you know, where am I sitting? What am I doing in this space? What am I doing in this zone? You can't think my iman won't be affected. If you stay on a road where there are drug peddlers, you are very conscious of it. And you'll make it, you know what, this guy is dealing with drugs here around the corner. Man. Except watch it carefully, don't go there. You are scared, you are worried, you are concerned. Your children mustn't go there. Hey, don't go to the cafe, man. Keep away from the chap. But for Allah's deen, you are not concerned where you sit. You know you can, you can fool yourself. It is Allah's wonderful Quran Kareem that shines out upon the darkest recesses of, of the heart. It shines out. It's a torch. It's a, it is a light that can never be extinguished. The nur of Allah shines out on the hearts. And Allah exposes it. You had your own Allah, who will let the Namanu, Wama Yachdaun, a lam, Fusahum, Wama Yishorun. After the first few ayats in the Quranic Kareem of Surah Baqarah, Allah Tala speaks about the Mu'mineen, their qualities, beautiful qualities. They believe they haven't seen. They believe they haven't seen Jannah. They haven't seen Jannah. They believe they haven't seen Qiyamah. They believe they're bidding yu'minuna bil ghayb. The first quality of the hudal lil muttaqin alladhina yu'minuna bil ghayb. If you don't have yaqeen and you don't have firm, on the, uh, firm faith on the unseen, it's very difficult for the balance for you to understand how you're going to make namaz if you don't believe, really believe what your heart and soul is. Jannam, you're not going to read the mass. You don't believe. You won't understand what the reset of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is because you don't believe in him to be, to be such a noble creation that you can't even think of what the person wrote. And not once, twice, or when he'll do it a third time. Why I'm taking up the subject if it is not challenged head on now? He can say it out of context, in context, that words shall never ever be thought about, ever be written out of context, in context. This out of context, in context, they say there's a mufti, is called out of context. Mufti uh, so and so, they call mufti out of context. Everything he does is caught out, uh, super, the COVID, what's the year? COVID, this virus is super, super spreader in the masjid. The masjids are super spreaders. When you go into Sujuj, you're a goner, you're a goner. SubhanAllah, you look at him, you'll think, oh, this guy must have been born there in the Haram Sharif. Look at his speech, man. He must have been raised in the holy air of Medina Manowara. He must have eaten, played in the sands of Medina Manowara. He must have drank from the wells of Medina Manowara. He must have been raised in the shadows of the mosque of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He must have been only seeing the beautiful air, breathing the beautiful air of Medina Manowara. He's such a powerful speaker. You must see how many followers he has to million three million followers yeah the person says he he says the masjid is a super spreader the place you make such da is a super spreader where you put your head in front of our beloved allah do you know how beautiful the masjid is do you know how super good the masjid is do you know how 
What can you say? Glorious our great Rabb is. Wallahi azim when you go to the masjid, Allah Ta'ala is getting more happier. It comes in a hadith of Nabi Islam. I get, Allah Ta'ala is more happier than a host who, who welcomes his guest. Allahu Akbar. You know, you get visitors. You are happy. You are laying at Allah. Spring in the Dastakhan. You are shining up, getting the children shined up, getting the yard clean. You're getting guests, man. Hey, mashallah, they're coming. I'm so happy, man. I am so honored, man. Allah Ta'ala gets more happier when you come to his house that my guest is coming. Allah loves his guest to come. And oh, you who had closed the masjid 25 salah, you closed it before lockdown. Understand well. You can say what you want to. It's an albatross on your neck. Your legacy will be just here. That people will forget you for your political sayings and whatever you have done. You make toba. Oh, you who, oh, you who said, who said what? The ulama are ashamed because they give fatwas of the fork and knife. Calling people who use fork and knife as kafirs, labeling them as kafirs. And you say, shame upon this ulama. I've challenged you. You are challenged. Bring where it is written. That only and only on the statement, any Ali Mufti, Molana, East, West, North, South, starting Richards Bay, go right till Kumati Port, start from Port Elizabeth, go right till Zeras. Any Ali, you use the word, Somebody who eats with a fork and knife, and you've expounded some principle. I don't want to even go into the principles, how severely you have misunderstood the Sharia. You have misunderstood what the principles of the Sharia are all about. And what you do? You say they gave a fatwa, they give a fatwa. They give a fatwa of kufr for a person eating with a knife and a fork. No one has ever given this fatwa. That's an albatross. Until these words are suspended in the air. Until these words are not retracted, until a toba is not made, until the day of Qiyamah, even after you've become dust in a cover, the sun will be accumulated to your name because that slander will live on. That slander lives on. So I appeal to you. I appeal. No, we don't have any personal grudges. Shukar. Alhamdulillah. Allah's fadl. Allah's fadl. Allah's fadl. Allah be praised. Subhanallah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. What personal grudge can you hold against anyone? You see when, and the speaker is not of this caliber, don't for a moment assume. But I will explain to you what lofty and what nobility a heart can, can be ingrained with. The Sahaba had real shari valid, I'm using the word very consciously, shari valid differences. It was so huge, it came to war. It was so huge, it broke out in war. Yet when the time of Salah came, everyone would put down their swords, remove their armor, leave their spears aside, leave their shields aside, make wuzu next to one another, stand surf, no social distance, by the way, stand surf next to one another, have one imam, no one disputed, he mustn't be imam, why it's from my group, and he mustn't be imam from you, and whatever it may be. Make ruku and takbir, and ruku and sajda, and takbir, and sit, and make salam on looking at one another, after looking at the shoulders, you look at the musallis. Subhanallah. Thereafter, they would eat together, bring what have you got? Bring what I have got. Let us sit together, let us sh share the meals. They have lied talk, they are not discussing anything serious. After the meals are concluded, now they say, let's get back. Let's look at the Quran and Hadith. This is our view. They say, this is your view. You compromise. They say, no compromise. You compromise. They say, no, we can't compromise. We can't compromise not because we want to be more powerful and more stronger and we want, uh, you know, nowadays they say also they want to take over. It's a power play. People are, are wanting to take our power. <laughs> They're not in, they worried about power. They're worried about the Sharia. We have to maintain the Sharia. What is going to happen to the Sharia? Usman Ghani allowed himself to be martyred because he wanted the world to understand on the day of, until the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. 
Usman Ghani was prepared to give his blood for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Told him, oh, Uthman, a day who is going to come in your life, oh my son-in-law, oh oh though oh the one who got married to two of the daughters of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One was married, she passed away. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam married the second one, she passed away. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said something, and which is it is it just elevates Usman and makes him a hero, a superhero in our eyes. Oh, Uthman, if I had forty daughters. I would have get, got everyone married to you, one after the other. You are so noble, you've got so much haya, you've got so much shame. You are so generous, you've got every quality any father-in-law would want in you. And the Shias call him a kafir. The Shia says he's a kafir. The Shias curse him after every salah. Do a check on your iman. Let's all of us do a check on our iman. How much do we love Usman? You see Shias? Acknowledge Shias, proud Shias. No one is advocating violence. I have mentioned no, but at least you don't embrace him warmly, as if you know he's your real brother in Islam. No, don't be violent. Don't even challenge them. They are masters at deception. They are the masters of the art of deception. They've got a principle called taqiya, and if their religion is filled with lust. It's a religion that is a deceptive religion. It is a religion that propounds lust. You can get with it for two hours, yes, and no one, I am sure, I'm not saying you can get with it. Obviously, I'm explaining what they are saying. You meet a girl, she's a Shia, and uh, you say, you know what, uh, let's get married, man. We get married for two hours. She says, no, my father, mother is gone, you know, I'm alone here. So when they come in, they say two hours. We make the car for two hours, and we get together. After two hours, Finish. You go your way, I give. go, man. It's a pro the, the, the religion of prostitutes. It's not the, the religion of Sayyidina wa Habibina wa Mawlana Muhammad Nabiuna sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Their azan is different. Their salah is different. Their fasting is different. Their hajj is different. Their Quran Sharif is different. Their qibla, more or less. Is, is Karbala is the Qibla, they go there and they weep there, they will never weep by the Baitullah like how they weep by Karbala. They take stones and keep it in their pockets and such a time they take that little clay stones and they make such a on it. And they can come out with such answers. You as a layman have stand no chance. You don't stand any chance. Just like how you wouldn't want your son or your brother or whoever it may be to be a befriend a drug peddler or a gangster, don't befriend them. You go your way. No violence, nothing. You go your way. You do your thing, we do our thing. Lakum dinukum waliyadin. No violence, no wars necessary. I say it very clearly. 1400 years Shiism is in existence. 1400 years. By and large, ulama spoke out, but it never came to the type of such violence where without any Concern for innocent people also bombs are placed in, in uh, lumps are blown apart, etc. Women, children are killed. That is not Islam that we know. That is not the Islam of Allah and His Rasul Like a coward, you go and you place a bomb in a bus. And like a coward, you go, you place a bomb in an airport and you say you're fighting the Shias. No. No, no, no. That is what the... People who are against the ulama are trying to portray the people who speak the haq. The ambassador, yeah, he made a statement. I'm watching him. I'm keeping a nice eye on him. He informed the government. He mentioned the articles are there, nicely in archives. If these extremists who are bombing people in the buses and restaurants and, uh, you know, uh, slaughtering the by knife beheading people if they take power in this country we all go on us it means if the majis takes uh, you know power in a country this country is a goner subhanallah shake up by remove that image of yours that you have in your mind we love you for allah's pleasure if you make toba we say it openly we love you for allah's pleasure if you make toba from your statements we love you, we will embrace you, will be more valuable and more precious than our own blood, blood and flesh. If you say, Ya Allah, from the bottom of my heart, what have I done? 
what did I write? You, can, you should be able to curse your finger and say, I wish I never was born. I wish I never had these fingers. I wish I never put my foot in a university. And I could all the claim and honor that eventually led me to become an ambassador to a superpower country. I wish I was an exist in existence. I wish I was a leaf on a tree. I wish I was a bird flying free. I wish I was just slaughtered as if, uh, if, uh, uh, being a sheep. What did I do? What did I do? Similarly to the one that says, you know what, they gave a fatwa. We love you, bye, we love you. We acknowledge your brilliance, the oratory skills Allah Ta'ala blessed you with. Such powerful bayanat, mashallah Ta'ala. We took pride in your achievements. We took pride when people could sit for hours in the and were enthralled and were mesmerized and fascinated it was magic pure magic it was iman calling it was islam calling today it is shaitan calling with the imani voice today it is iblis calling under the garb of the seerah of muhammad we have no bone whatsoever to pick personal bone with any SG, whether it is Satan's, Satan's general, general secretary or whatever it may be. We got no bone to pick whatsoever. But we say to you, and I say it, and I'm going to say it, and it will maybe, uh, I know I'm going over time, but you know when a match goes over time, everyone is excited, you know, oh, 15 minutes, 15 minutes here, you know, oh, another couple of hours. And they get more himma to listen even more. I mean, they get more himma to they jump up and they are excited, you know, hey, it's going, it's going towards the end now. So there are a few more minutes, it's for the sake of Allah and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I will say something. I met this brother, I know him, Alhamdulillah, for many years. Yeah? And I say this here, we don't write anyone off. Never, ever. If you have used hard words here, it's to pierce the skull. That skull of ours that contain a brain. That brain that has been so polluted that we can't understand what is happening. That is why the strong words are being used. When they shoot at a tank, they don't shoot with an arrow. They don't shoot with a normal gun. They don't shoot with a machine gun. They need a missile. It must be not only normal missile, an anti-tank missile. You use the weapon as per the situation. One day I was in Medina, Manwara. And Alhamdulillah, this person came, Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam. Can I ask you a masala? No. What can I say? I don't know. I'm an ignorant person in as far as the ulama are concerned. Yes, a few things we know. Alhamdulillah. I'm not of that alama type or something like that. We know some things. Shukran to Allah. But Nekmat, very great Nekmat, extremely great Nekmat. Alhamdulillah, we know a few things. It doesn't mean we don't know anything yet. Then why you talk? We have to bring these things in between. So anyway, a, a bit of prince of pai, what masala could it be? And with very concerned eyes, in a tone of a person who is very, very worried that he mustn't do something wrong, a question was asked. I want to know, you know, when we stand in front of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi the Mawajah Sharif, where people stand and make salam from, obviously we, feign, we face the Mawajah Sharif, the back. If we perform salah, the back is going to face the Mawajah Sharif. If I stand there and read my namaz and my back faces Rasulullah Sallam, isn't this disrespectful? Is, wouldn't it be disrespectful? Allah! I think you can see. You have to say Allah Akbar. Something that never even came to my mind in a, such a serious manner as it came to this person's mind. He really wants to know. I told him, no. Clear your mind of this here. The Salah, the Sharia has ordained us to face the Qibla. If this was going to be a Masala, the Bishas would have mentioned when you perform Salah, Allah Ta'ala knew people who are going to perform Namaz, Salah, where the Muwajah Sharif is, the backs are going to face, uh, that provision would have been made in the Sharia. Alhamdulillah, covered in the Sahaba stood like this here, whoever it was, he stood there and he performed Salah. Don't look down upon anyone. Coach Patani, Bigre Weko, Banne Me Koi Dernay Lata, 
بگڑے ہوئے کو بننے میں کوئی دیر نہیں لگتا بننے کو بگڑنے میں کوئی دیر نہیں لگتا مولا مسی اللہ رحمت اللہ وانس تو می لسن یا لسن اٹینٹفلی او لسن اٹینٹفلی وات ایم سینگ تو یو بنے ہوئے کو بگڑنے میں کوئی دیر نہیں لگتا اینی وان ہو اس اچھیف ان اکمپلیش سپرچول اسپیشلی او اینی such stage of love for Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anyone, there is no guarantee that he can lose what he had. He can fall and he can be corrupted. He can be utterly corrupted. Similarly, a person who is utterly corrupted, a person who is utterly corrupted, Don't look at him with despise, personal despise. The possibility is there that he can improve himself and become a very accomplished person. If words are used, depicting insult or derogatory remarks, etc., we as the layman don't understand what the intention is of the speaker. It's perhaps to shake him. It's perhaps to alert him, out of love for him. It's nothing personal for if that particular person who is straight off the truth, who is straight from the truth, if he is injured or is in severe, in severe calamity, the one that used the, what we can call insulting words, they would be the first to help and say, what can I do for you? How can I assist you? Don't Don't compare apples to lemons. These only are they know what they are doing. When you speak harsh words, they will speak harsh words, there most certainly will be a raham in there. Sooner or later, the raham will manifest itself provided that the heart has still got a little flicker of iman. That iman can still be the flicker is there. It has not been totally extinguished. That iman can be Re, re, it can be fan to become a raging fire within the hearts. When a time of the person came, I conclude with a story. Azrat, I'm thinking of becoming a Nasara. When a time he said, I said, but what, DJ, you mustn't speak like this here. It's not nice. Uh, okay, when a time I explained to him, Islam is so beautiful, you, you, you're so pure and clean, just your cleanliness. You want to know, you know, what is the beauty of Islam and the benefit of Islam? Look at Yusuf in the mirror, amen. I'm clean, my nails are clubbed. Allah shukar, alhamdulillah. Uh, my clothing is spark. I'm not walking with soiled underwear. I have washed and cleansed myself. When a kafir looks at himself, this believer looks at himself in the mirror. Can he say anything of this here? Can she say anything of this here? No, the nails are long. I read about a uh, kafira, this believer. She, she for 30 years never clipped the nails. I feel her husband sorry. Whoever it is, must feel humanity sorry, you know. 30 years. I read day before yesterday. And she's proud about it. Allah give us, Alhamdulillah bi ni'matil Islam. Alhamdulillah bi ni'matil Islam. We praise Allah on this great ni'mat of Islam. One of the explaining. He went away a couple of months ago. I'm thinking I'm becoming a Christian. Explain to him a second time. By this is shaitan, it's vespasa, ignore his thoughts. Yeah, after when he came the third time, <laughs> I don't think anyone really did this here. He, he just blurted the words, I think I want to become, as he said, a Christian. Moratami was already halfway up. Latmara. In Urdu, you know what's Latmara? He smacked him or he kicked him. Physically. Physically, he gave him one smack. Or kick, or it could be a combination of both. This was Hakimul Umma, and he was very strong physically. And he grabbed him and he told him, Come bakhat, you rascal. Come bakhat. Abinijau. Go now. Islam don't need you. Get out. Get now. He pushed him. Get out from here. You think Islam needs you? If anyone wants to become Christian, Jew, they become, want to become atheists and they become fire worshippers. Once, twice we explain, but if they are adamant, why must the Haq bow to them and lick them, boots and uh, uh, try its utmost, you know, don't do it in the person. The more you tell him, don't do it, 
He feels more important. Oh, I'm a very important. Look here, no one gave face answers to my questions. You want to become a Shia? Go. So Mawlana Thamir Rahmanali, this was his attitude. Now me and you, if we had really over, what type of Ali man? How can he hit the person? He must have mercy. Why he? is he so harsh? You know, Rasulullah was kind. Rasulullah was kind. was a mercy. This can't be an Ali. This is a person who's causing fitna. That person is going to go to Jannam now. He's going to become a Christian. Who's going to be responsible? You see all over Sawis. You know what is this, uh, the root in the seeds of these wasawis? Lack of sohbat for proper awliya. You haven't really said what is known. Set or taken the time and appreciation and the, the nur that is in the hearts of the awliya as people speak and affect one another. You haven't done it. If you did it, it wasn't sufficient. If it was su sufficient, thereafter you struck backwards by associating with the wrong crowd. Story is not finished. It's a couple of years thereafter, a person come, elderly person, Salaamu Alaikum, Wa Alaikum Salaam. First thing, how you've come, where you've come from. First thing, let's get down to the, what is your objective of coming. He said, Adne Pinchanani, you don't recognize me? He says, no, who are you? He said, it's the same one, you know. You're one smack in your one kick, smashed, to smotherings, the thoughts of becoming a Christian. You once make any one kick, ruffled my brain and my heart. It cleared all the mess and pollution that Shaitan urinated and excreted in. And I'm still a Muslim. I came to thank you for the kick and the smack. Allahu Akbar. The true awliya is barakat and this rahmat in the harshness also. I'm not saying anything but appealing to the ambassador and to, the, to these people who I have explained in somewhat detail the error or the wrong. I would like to think it was unintentional. I would like to think it was not deliberate. But now that you know the effects of it, a person bumps into your car, it's a big smash, and he says it was unintentional and not deliberate by me. Let me ask you with Muslim brothers, you know, Alhamdulillah, you know, Muslim brotherhood, the salam, salam and all. And he drives away, you're going to say, wait, 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 halt. Who's going to fix up by here? This is my BM, a brand new one, you know. I see the headlights are gone and I see the bumper is gone and I see, you know, the bonnet is damaged and I see, you know, the windscreen is cracked. You see, we are Muslim brothers, man. Let bygones be bygones, man. We can't go now into this. Yeah, let's look forward. I don't think any sane, reasonable, logical person in San would say, okay, it's fine. Walk away with a smile. You make dua for me, I make dua for you. And I'm telling you people, you make dua for me, I make dua for Allah. Look what's right after us over Afiat. Inshallah, Jumadi will continue with the subject. Wa Alhamdulillah. Salim Bay.